This time on Homie's Hot Rods, we finished my go-kart. How dare you? Connor's go-kart uh, had the vertical shaft engine in it, but the starter went bad and we discovered that the, a new battery, I'm sorry, a new starter was very expensive. But we found out that a brand new Predator engine was actually cheaper than replacing that starter. So for Christmas, kind of got this Predator engine, which is a horizontal shaft. But we decided to go horizontal because when you base a go-kart off a tractor, um, you're very limited on speed and um, gearing it up and things like that. Um, so we decided to just go to a live axle, like a go-kart style axle. So we're gonna pull it down, figure out what we need to mount the engine. It's gonna be a front engine go-kart, which will be kind of unique. And like I said, we're gonna convert it to a live axle. The only <laughs> All right, pull that off of there. We got the fuel on and off. All right, brand new engine and we're modding it up. You got it. Oh, that's got like a, yeah, save that and don't destroy it. We need that. officially not a lawn tractor rear end now it's a live axle spins nice and free all right four slots old-fashioned way all right we got the motor dropped in the engine excuse me all four bolts are dropped in and right now we're back all the way so if i slide this forward okay that's how much chain adjustment we got that should be plenty all right we got this ready to start we put oil in it. We rigged up a quick exhaust pipe. Got the clutch clamped down. We got our fuel line hooked up. All right, we got the throttle, throttle pedal hooked up. Pretty easy, three bolts to mount it. Three bolts. Cut the cable to length. These Predators make it super easy. You just loosen this nut right here and it makes the throttle work um, with a spring return. You got the stopper set so we don't sit on the cable when you give it throttle. We got the jack shafts in and locked down. Chain one, going back to this one. Chain two, back to the axle. Now, if we start this engine, we should be able to spin those rear tires. We put the gas tank back in first, but we're gonna give it a try. got here is master cylinder it's gonna go up here and this is the brake caliper and we made this bracket for it bolted it on so what we're gonna do is slide the caliper into place onto the disc move it up as high as we can to get it out of the weeds and then we can just reach in here and just weld the crap out of that big old bracket there and we should have our brakes close to done, then all we gotta do is do the pedal. I don't know if we videotaped, oh, don't break that. <laughs> I don't know if we videotaped it, any of the making of the pedal, but if you wanna look at the pedal there, that came out really nice. This was a brake pedal that we took out of a old Chevy truck. We had to section it and shorten it and 
all we did was add these angle iron brackets here, but that's gonna work great. It's, it's a big old pedal that, in a panic, if you stab your foot for it, you'll hit it. The bigger it is, the better. All right, let's roll this over and get it welded. Rolls better than it did before. All right, let's get that caliper welded on. All right, we didn't film because we we're excited and thrashing around. It's supposed to rain in about an hour, so we're, we wanted to get a ride in today. We got the seat bolted down. We got the disc brake caliper bracket made we got the master cylinder mounted good and sturdy welded to the running board and then we come across to the frame so that master is super stiff we made the push rod here we made it very adjustable we used a like a turnbuckle setup whatever you call that as i said before it's a chevy truck brake pedal we have a travel stop so when he hits bumps the pedal doesn't pop out of the push rod and flip back we got a kill switch done up. We did a lot of things kind of quick and rough, but safe. We got things kind of taped to the, to the strut here. We got the brake hose not hitting the chain. The way you hook up a kill switch on these is predators have a kill switch here. And all, all the kill switch does is short this wire to ground. So if you tie in before this switch, and run the wire over to another switch, then all you gotta do is run this switch to a ground. Now, if it's a normal toggle switch, it'll be backwards. On will be off, off will be on. So since this is like an emergency panic shutoff switch in case the clutch sticks on for some reason or the throttle sticks, um, you know, off is up. So you just throw that away from you or kick it off or whatever, and that'll kill the engine. But we're ready for a test drive. Are you ready for a test drive? You have your helmet on already. All right, lower that lift down. We'll get this painted up pretty, but we, we don't like to paint things up pretty until we take them for rides and work out the bugs and all that stuff. So we're gonna do a test drive in rough condition first. Do you need help? The biggest concern is gearing. We have no idea what gearing it has. Oh, it's geared plenty fast. Maybe a little too fast. Ooh, look at that thing go. Oh, it's fast. There we go. Because we kept throwing chains, we came up with a tensioner that should solve the problem. We got a Teflon roller and we just bolted it to the frame of the tractor here. And then we just ran a piece of angle iron straight up to the frame, welded it. And the good thing about this is it rolls. So the chain will wear through it. But a lot of even factory like four wheelers have Teflon guides for the chains like that. So, so someday this will wear out, but if it does, we'll flip it, over, flip it around and wear out the other side. So we'll get two uses out of this block, but it's really thick. So I think it'll last a long time. And I got enough material to make like 10 more. So that chain tensioner should do the job. All right, take two, go ahead. Video's picking that up. Oh, he's doing, he's doing spins. kind of 
of cold and miserable. <laughs> yeah, roosters. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs>